Hey everybody, how's it going? Today, let's take a detailed look at the all new 2013 Hyundai Santa Fe Sport 2 liter turbo. And this is gonna be a detailed in-depth review of the Santa Fe. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clipping over the performance data, as well as show you a bunch of the unique aspects of the interior as well as exterior. I'd like to give a big thanks and special shout out to Bob Dunn Hyundai of Greensboro, North Carolina for allowing me to come out and film the all new 2013 Hyundai Santa Fe Sport. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up, let her run. One of the first things you notice as nighttime falls is the LED illumination located inside the door handles to better illuminate the handle at night. Now this particular Santa Fe comes with an integrated smart key access system, so by just keeping the key fob in your pocket and utilizing the little black buttons on the door handles, you're able to lock and unlock the vehicle. Just tap it once, one beep indicates locking, then after waiting a second tap it again, two beeps indicate unlocking. The exterior color is known as Canyon Copper with the two-tone beige and dark brown cloth interior. Now, full leather interior is also an option for this vehicle and some of the upper trim levels. That little chime will go off every time you get in the vehicle and shut the door actually before starting the car. If you start the car beforehand, it'll kind of bypass the little welcoming charm. Beautiful, newly restyled interior definitely matches up with the rest of the New Age Hyundai lineup. And with that smart key access system, you also have a remote push button ignition system. All you have to do is put your foot on the brake, hit the button to start. Very nice. Now, aimed in efficiency for the 2013 Santa Fe is a new electrically assisted rack and pinion steering system that allows driver adjustable feedback control through this little button right here. You can change the settings from normal, sport, and comfort. Nice and customizable. Soft leather wrapped steering wheel, side bolster and grip extensions, and a three spoke design with gunmetal gray accenting highlighting the buttons. As far as the transmission, it's a standard six-speed automatic gearbox, nice and smooth with manual shiftability, and a leather-wrapped shift knob and boot with a little bit of high-gloss black accenting. And so we're going to flip on the automatic headlamps, fog lamps, as well as the hazards. Driver's side window is also fully automatic. And we're going to check out the exterior, shall we? The vehicle also chime a couple of seconds, letting you know it's lost detection of the proximity key fob. Hyundai has come a long way over the years with their Sonata-based Hyundai Santa Fe crossover. The all-new third generation for 2013 represents everything Hyundai's been working towards and achieving over the years with their fluidic sculpture design philosophy, advancements in build quality, refinement, and value. The original Santa Fe was introduced back in 2001 and was always criticized as having awkward styling to say the least. The second generation introduced in 2007 brought about more contemporary designs and featured a better blend of quality and value in a more attractive skin. 2013, however, is technically the first total revision of the model lineup since the beginning. It's offered in two different body styles, sport and long wheelbase, with a variety of engine choices depending on the model and a myriad of standard and optional luxury features. While we'll primarily cover the sport in this video, I'll also be uploading a video on the limited long wheelbase to highlight some additional features, passenger space, and styling details. It can be found in this video's description as soon as the video is available. This particular Santa Fe Sport is pretty much the standard trim before you start tacking on some of the optional extra packages like the technology group, etc. 
There are also a wide variety of wheel choices for the Santa Fe. This particular sport comes with a set of 19-inch painted aluminum alloys wrapped in 235-55 Continental all-season tires, paired with four-wheel disc brakes with internally ventilated front discs. Their diameter measures 12.6 inches in front and 11.9 inches in the rear, with single piston sliding calipers on each brake set. This brings the Santa Fe to a stop from 60 miles an hour and approximately 120 feet. As far as the suspension, it consists of independent McPherson struts in front with independent multi-link rear, with coil springs, twin tube dampers, and front and rear anti-roll bars. One of the biggest differences overall is the styling and the new powertrain options that are also borrowed from the new Sonata. While the body is more sculpted and smooth, the Sport, with its stockier profile, still retains its youthful nature, but in a more refined and elegant body. One of the other significant advantages of this particular vehicle and its class is its curb weight. At around 3,450 pounds, it's about 266 pounds less than the outgoing model, mostly thanks to about a 13% increase in the use of high-strength tensile steel, which also gives it an increase in torsional rigidity by about 16%. The basic chassis has been carried over pretty much unchanged for sport models, but overall, length is increased by about a half an inch, while width is down by 0.4 inches and height down by 1.8 inches, leading to a sleeker profile than before. Overall, length is 184.6 inches with a width of 74 inches and a height of 66.1 inches. And a couple of the things you'll see in some of the upper trim levels that I highlight here are LED integrated turn signal mirrors, a panoramic sunroof, heated rear seats, the leather trim, brushed aluminum door sill plaques, as well as a 4.3 inch mobile media telemetric system that you can also upgrade to a navigation system and I'll show all of that during the Hyundai Santa Fe Limited long wheelbase video. And we're going to pop the hood. The Santa Fe is available in both front wheel drive and all wheel drive with three different engine choices available but only two for the sport model. The third, a 3.3 liter V6 is exclusive to the long wheelbase. For the Sport, you can either have an all-aluminum, naturally aspirated, direct-injected 2.4-liter four-cylinder that produces 190 horsepower and 181 pound-feet of torque, or a dual overhead cam, direct-injected 16-valve all-aluminum turbocharged four-cylinder that produces a healthy 264 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 269 pound-feet of torque as low as 1750 RPM. The new Turbo 4 produces about 10 less horsepower than the Sonata's counterpart, Due to various differences in exhaust routing and engine programming, it delivers a respectable amount of power for this application. It also develops more torque than the last generation's V6. This launches the Sport to 60 miles an hour in just under 9 seconds, with a quarter mile time of 16 and a half seconds at 83 miles per hour. Fuel economy with a 16.4 gallon tank on regular gas is expected between 20 city and 27 highway. Interior build quality for the Santa Fe is also pretty good. And as far as styling and fitment goes, it's definitely been brought into the 21st century matching the rest of the New Age Hyundai lineup as mentioned earlier. The majority of the interior panels are padded, even some of the plastic pieces have a nice soft touch to them, so it gives it more of a high quality feeling interior. And there's also plenty of satin silver accenting coming across the doors, as well as the dash and center console. Your power mirrors, power windows, and power locks are located here next to your stitched padded armrest with the integrated Santa Fe logo embedded in the side. Now this particular model has pretty much the standard interior for the Santa Fe. I'll contrast with that other, more loaded model, so you can see the different interior options and how it kind of spices it up a little bit. Now with the addition of the sport leather bucket seats in the Santa Fe, it gives the standard seats a lot more definition. Bolstering coming up across the sides for increased lateral grip and support, as well as perforations coming up across the middle to keep them nice and ventilated. Integrated side airbags, adjustable seat belts, and adjustable headrests, and your full power adjustments located down below here with your four way power lumbar adjustment. Also optional are a set of logoed aluminum door sills, standard driver knee airbag, as well as a manual tilting telescoping steering wheel. And you'll also notice in this one versus the standard one, it's more of a faux carbon fiber trim versus a wood grain in the standard model. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds. There is a rev limiter in park and neutral around 4,000 RPM.
So let's go and shut her up. Nice and soft closing doors. Nice seamless integration of the dash and how it curves out with this panel here to nicely fit the side of the door panel. Now as far as infotainment, this is the basic layout in the standard Santa Fe. Single zone climate control down below, as well as an in-dash CD player here with Sirius XM satellite radio, MP3 compatible, as well as Bluetooth for hands-free streaming of audio amongst the phone. Pretty simple in its operation. Plenty of curves in the dash. Especially nice with the two-tone color scheme. You also have a little storage pocket located up here. Also soft touch. Side curtain airbags. Integrated card holder. Light located up above. Just shut it to close it. If you didn't want to have to flip the switch again. And as you come down the flowing center console, you'll see the standard single zone automatic climate control system. Different zones located across here, front and rear defrost, and your temperature adjustment. Very simple. Down below, you have your auxiliary and USB input, as well as two power outlets, and almost kind of a floating lower portion of the center console. Almost like big handles, so to speak. Coming across the middle, you have your cup holders, as well as standard three-stage heated seats. So, even though you don't opt for the leather, you can still get heated seats with the cloth model. Stitch padded armrest, plenty of storage space. And as far as the steering wheel, you have your radio controls off to the left, cruise control off to the right, as well as your hands-free Bluetooth telephone and voice commands over here. Please say a command. Help. Help. You can say preset number like preset 1, auto store, scan, preset scan, or more help. Please say a command. Cancel. Cancel. So that's pretty self-explanatory. All the commands and how to use it are listed in the system as well as your owner's manual. Down below here, you control your driver information system that shows up in the middle of your instrumentation cluster. Go between your radio, service data, personalizable options, trip computer and fuel data, the gauge cluster is also quite neat looking, electroluminescent, and they're also 3D. Those middle digital portions for the temperature and fuel actually stick out where they're backlit by that blue. Gives a nice clean look. Alrighty. Okay, shut her down. And we'll check out the back seat. Backseat passengers also get treated with more comfort and room. Nice wide opening doors. Similar styling pattern on the back doors that you find on the front with the integrated padded armrests. What's also nice about the back seat is that it's fully adjustable whether you want it to fold back or just simply recline. There's a little lever down below here. If you pull it up, you can fold it all the way down. It'll lock in place so you can greatly expand the rear cargo space. Otherwise, it's kind of hard to show with just two hands, but you can set it at different places depending on how far back you want to go. <laughs> Vents mounted in the B pillar for extra comfort, and there's also a 12 volt power outlet located in the back of the center console. Rear illumination, coat hooks, and a fold down center console with pop out cup holders. Also has a nice soft touch to it. The Santa Fe also feels a lot bigger than it actually is. I'm about five foot ten or so. I have at least half a foot or so of leg space and probably pretty similar in head space. Right around here, the roof kind of extends up a little ways and gives a little bit more headway clearance. Not to mention there's some side curtain airbags in the rear for the back passengers as well. 
Yeah, we're gonna check out the rest of the vehicle, shall we? And while this particular Santa Fe isn't equipped with it, you can also opt for a full power lift gate. It's also found in the limited model, and I'll show that in the video that I upload next. Now, as far as the cargo space for this particular model, it's slightly less than the full size long wheelbase version. But with all the seats up, it's around 35.4 cubic feet, with a little bit of storage space on either side. Fold the seats down and it can swallow up to 71.5 cubic feet. There's also a bit of illumination in the rear, and you can also opt for a rear AC power outlet if desired. The passenger seat is manual. Does have a pretty good size glove box. Nice and roomy. Good size well. The all new Santa Fe leaves its predecessors in the dust with better refinement, entertainment, and economy. With a wide variety of options and two essentially separate models, it broadens the customer appeal for those with different needs. A great new contender in the modern crossover market. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed the in depth look at the all new 2013 Hyundai Santa Fe Sport Turbo. Be sure to stay tuned next time. There's a lot more where that came from. Take care, everybody.